We think that uh, there's a strong need for maritime patrol and maritime surveillance assets around the world. Uh, I think that countries are in particular paying more attention today to their maritime borders, their exclusive economic zones and their territorial seas. And that countries would like to know what's happening in these waters and they'd like to, to keep track of things like illegal immigration, illegal fishing and other activities that are going on within their maritime areas of responsibility. So there's global awareness of borders and maritime borders at the moment. In addition to that, there's other considerations such as search and rescue and long-range search and rescue as uh, written down in the Chicago Convention. Uh, there's also military considerations, of course, and especially countries who have submarines or who have threats from submarines. And in particular, the submarine, the countries that operate submarines would like to have maritime patrol aircraft firstly to train against, but also uh, to protect their submarines. And Countries in general which have naval aspirations, of course, they see how an advanced maritime patrol aircraft like this fits into their maritime and naval doctrines. So, yes, we feel there's a clear need and a future demand for maritime surveillance and maritime patrol aircraft globally. I'm Andy Walton. I'm the uh, Vice President for Strategy Air uh, for Saab, looking after Europe, Middle East and North Africa. Uh, turning to the UK's current maritime patrol capability gap, um, here in Saab we're very aware of the fact that for a nation like the UK that this is a temporary um, state of affairs. We're aware of work being conducted within the UK to look at options for filling the gap as part of their Air I-Star optimization study. Within Saab, um, we take this uh, very seriously. We have a lot of experience within the maritime surveillance and maritime patrol arenas. Um, we look to the UK as a leader in this, uh, in this area in terms of requirement. It's uh, a significant player on the world stage. It's a large economy. It has global interests. It has a nuclear deterrent force and of course it has the submarine force. It therefore is axiomatic to us that the country will get back into the maritime patrol aircraft game and we very much look forward to being part of that. One of the things that makes this uh, turboprop unique over a jet, for example, um, especially with this particular turboprop, because this is a high-speed turboprop with a very high cruise speed, and one of the things that makes that unique is its ability to get somewhere quickly, but also then to go down low level and have superior handling qualities at low level and superior time on station, or if you like, endurance. So the range and endurance of a high-speed turboprop for a low-level mission such as search and rescue or anti-submarine warfare is definitely beneficial to a turboprop. One of the other benefits of a turboprop like this one is the short field length that it requires. And if you take the number of airfields around the world which this particular airplane can get in and out of as compared to a larger jet, you certainly see the advantages of a high speed, speed turboprop aircraft. And finally, because of the smart systems and the advanced command and control system we have on board, we're able to wrap this advanced anti-submarine warfare aircraft up into the tight, small wrapper, relatively small wrapper of this high-speed turboprop. And one of the things that that means is that over the life cycle of the aircraft, the cost of ownership and the cost of operation is really a fraction of what a large jet is.